So here's a simple equation. It's simplified. The only thing is that the X is on the right side of the equal sign. So you want to get the X by itself. You don't want the three. You don't want the two. You want to get X by itself. Uh, what do you get rid of first, the three or the two? The two, right? X is what's important. Three is with the X, kind of important. The two is all by itself. You get rid of that one first. So subtract two. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So you end up with a 12 equals 3X, which is really a 12 equals three times X. And if you don't want that multiplication of three, you're going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is division of three. And what you do to one side, do to the other. That eliminates. You end up with the equal sign, the X over here by itself. And that's the goal to get X by itself. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. There's your answer, but the nicer way of saying it is x equals 4 instead of 4 equals x. And you could always double check your answer by plugging it back in. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 2 really is equal to 14. So you could double check that way. All right, let's move on to this next one. And again, we're alternating turns. Whoever worked the last one, now you're going to watch and help. Whoever watched and helped on the last one, now you're going to work. On this one, it's a simplified equation. There is no distributed property, no combining like terms. Here's the X, you want it by itself. Now, this might confuse some people, right? It's a lot easier if it would have said, uh, imagine that 2X equals four. That's really easy. All you gotta do is divide by two and divide by two and you're done. But it doesn't say 2X equals four. It says two divided by three X equals four. So you don't want this divided by three. You could get rid of it by doing the opposite of dividing by three, which is multiplying by three. And notice that I put that multiplication of three up here because you could multiply and then divide, or you could just cancel them out, right? But whatever you do to one side, if I multiply by three on the left side, I have to multiply by three on the right side. So the threes cancel, what do I have left? Two X, and of course equals four times three is 12. That's really saying two times X equals 12. To get rid of the multiplication of two in front of X, you divide by two, and we do to one side, do to the other, and that's how you get X equals six. If you have x equals six, get up and move. If you don't, stay where you're at. This one is so easy that for some reason, a lot of students get it wrong. Okay, so uh, this should be a freebie. This is like, you should look at it and know the answer. Now, if you're, if you're actually doing some math on your paper, you're probably gonna get it wrong, okay? Well, you don't want a negative x, you want a positive x, right? That's a whole goal to get X by itself. You want it to be positive X, not negative. So what could you do? You could just change to a positive. As long as what you do to one side, do to the other side, change that positive four fifths to a negative four fifths. So there's your answer. X equals negative four fifths. I mean, if somebody actually asks you, explain to me how you just change that sign. Well, technically you could have said, well, I'm gonna multiply this side by negative one and I'm gonna multiply that side by negative one, right? What you do to one side, do to the other. That changes the sign from a negative x to a positive x. That changes the four fifths to a negative four fifths. That's the actual explanation. Or you could have divided both sides by negative one. That would also change the signs. Let's move on to this next question. Go ahead and copy that down. Right here we have, not, this is not difficult. It just has variables on both sides. That's the only thing. It's still simplified. Give it a shot, go for it. The explanation to this question. Uh, there is no distributed property, no combining like terms on either of these sides. So you move on to getting X by itself on one side of the equal sign. The problem is you have X's on both sides of that equal sign. So you wanna get rid of one of them. You either get rid of the two X or the four X. It doesn't really matter which one. I am going to get rid of the two X by subtracting two X. And what I do to one side, I do to the other side, subtract two X. So my new equation is a negative five on the left side. Uh, four take away two is two and we're talking about X's and I bring down the plus 11. So there's my new simple equation with only an X on the right side of the equal sign, no longer an X over here. Now, I still need to get this X by itself. So I need to get rid of that plus 11 by doing the opposite. I'm going to subtract 11. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. I will get negative 16 equals 2X. And that really means negative 16 equals two times X. To get rid of that multiplication of two in front of the X, you divide by two. And what you do to one side, do to the other. Final answer is negative eight equals X. X equals negative eight. That's your answer. If you have it right, get up and move. If not, stay where you're at. Copy that one down. That one's pretty easy. All you gotta do is simplify the left side first. And I probably shouldn't tell you, but you gotta simplify the side first, either by doing distributed property or combining like terms. 
and then you solve it. Go for it. Um, you want to simplify the equation first. Simplify means distributed property and or combine like terms. So of course there is no distributed property, but you could combine that X with that X. That's a total of two X's. Bring down the minus seven, bring down the equal, bless you. Bring down the three. There's your new simplified equation. You want to get rid of the two and the seven. Obviously get rid of the seven first. X is what's important. Two is with the X, kind of important. Get rid of the number that's all by itself. So we're going to get rid of that minus seven by doing the opposite plus seven. What you do to one side, do to the other side. You end up with 2x, the equal sign comes down, 3 plus 7 is 10. And notice that my equal sign keeps coming down, separating the left side from the right side. I am down to my la last step. That really says 2 times x equals 10. You're going to divide by 2 to get rid of the multiplication of 2. What you do to one side, do to the other side. x equals 5 is the answer. Okay, let's move on. Here's another problem that requires simplification. Go ahead and do it. Quick explanation, you want to simplify each side. Obviously, the 4 is already simple. On the right side, we do have simplification, which is distributive property and or uh, combining like terms. There is no combining like terms. We're going to distribute. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Bring down the equal sign, bring down the 4. So x is clearly on the right side of the equal sign. You want it by itself. You don't want this 2. You don't want the 10. What do you get rid of first? The 10. So we're going to get rid of the minus 10 by adding 10. And what you do to one side, you do to the other side. 4 plus 10 is 14 equals 2x. And that 2x really means 2 times x. So you want to get rid of that multiplication of 2. You're going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing. That's why we put the division bar, the fraction bar. Divide by 2. That cancels out. What you do to one side, do to the other. You will have 7 equals x. And of course, you're going to write it x equals 7. That looks a lot better. Again, keep in mind, look how I stayed organized. The equal sign keeps coming down straight all the way through to my final answer. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Let's move on. Try this one. Some of us get freaked out with this, but the bottom line is it's easy to get rid of fractions. You could get rid of one fraction at a time by multiplying everything by the denominator, or you could get rid of all fractions at the same time by multiplying everything by the LCD. Here's the, the beginning part of solving this problem. If the fractions confuse you, you could get rid of one of them at a time, or you could get rid of all of them at the same time by identifying the LCD. Now, some of us struggle with that, so let me uh, remind you how to find that LCD. You go to the biggest one, eight, and you ask yourself, could you change the four to become eight? Yes. Could you change the six to become eight? No, because six times two is not eight, it's 12. So eight didn't work. Then you double it, right? What's eight doubled? 16. Could you change four to become 16? Yes. Could he become six? Six, could he change it to become 16? No. So 16 didn't work. Now triple it. What's eight times three? 24. Could he change four to become 24? Could he change six to become, yes. So 24 is the LCD. Now that's the first part, identifying that the LCD is 24. Now, if you multiply all of these terms by 24, that by 24, this by 24, this by 24, all three fractions will completely disappear. Now, uh, again, I'm not going to finish this, but I'm going to get you started. You could, if you wanted to, with the calculator, go 24 times 3, get a huge number, and then on the calculator, divide by 4, and that'll give you an answer. Or it's easier to actually divide first and then multiply. Because we all should know that 24 divided by 4 is what? 6. And then you could do, okay, 6 times that 3. What's 6 times 3? 18. So no more fraction. It's not a three-fourths anymore. It's now just a beautiful 18, okay? The next one, I say 24 divided by six, what's that? Four, and then four times one X. What's four times one X? Four X, okay. And then over here, I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna let you guys keep working. You gotta do the same thing over here and then continue solving, obviously. Go for it, I'll explain it in a couple of seconds. Continuing with the explanation here, when I, I'm not going to, I mean, I could go 24 times 7, get a huge number, then divide it by 8. But it's a lot easier to just say 24 divided by 8 is 3, and then 3 times 7 is 21. So I got rid of all three fractions. I now need to worry about getting x by itself. So, of course, if you want x by itself, you're going to get rid of the 18 first, the number that's all by itself. So you're going to subtract 18. And what you do to one side, do to the other, subtract 18. Your new equation is 4x equals 
three, and I hope nobody cheats here while I'm explaining it, that's really saying four times x equals three. So the way to get rid of that multiplication of four is to divide by four. And what you do to one side, do to the other. And that is your answer, x equals three fourths. Now, if you put a decimal 0 0.75, I guess that's correct also. So if you got that right, get up and move. If you got it wrong, stay where you're at. So again, we wanna simplify each side of the equation. If you look at the right side, that's already simple. That's a nice, beautiful six. So we're gonna work on simplifying the left side of the equal sign, okay? So on the left side, do we have any distributive property? Yes, we do. We're gonna distribute this uh, minus three. Minus three times positive four X, that's a minus 12 X. Minus three times negative one, negative times negative is a positive three. And then after you distribute, you simply bring everything down. That five is gonna come down right here, right in front. This plus 10 X is gonna come down right here at the back, plus 10 X, okay? And we've distributed, after distribution, then you move on to combining like terms. We're gonna combine the negative 12 X with the positive 10 X. That's like owing $12 and having $10. You're still gonna owe two of those dollars, but we're talking about X's here. And then you're gonna combine the five with the positive three, that's gonna be a positive eight. So this is what we call simplifying. This was huge, it was disgusting, and now we only have two terms. This is a now simplified left side of the equal sign. Now I could rewrite, bring down the equal sign, bring down the six. So I have an equal sign, I have six. Now it's just a two-step equation. I wanna get x by itself. What do I get rid of first, the eight or the negative two? The eight, so you're gonna go minus eight, cancels out, minus eight, what you do to one side, do to the other. You're gonna end up with a negative two X. Again, the equal sign comes down, and six, take away eight over here is negative two. And that's really saying negative two times X equals negative two. So you already know that the answer is gonna be one, but you could show your work by dividing by negative two, dividing by negative two, that'll cancel out. X equals positive one. If you have that, get up and move. If you don't have it, stay where you're at. Uh, we want to simplify each side. Simplify means distributive property and or combining like terms. If you look at the right side of the equation, there is distributive property. Negative two times negative three X, that's a positive six X. Negative two times positive three is a negative six. Bring down the minus three and we could still combine like terms. You see the six X, you can't really combine it. So you just write it six X. But the minus three and the minus six, that becomes a minus nine. And that's as much as you could simplify on the left side. This was big and ugly, and now it's uh, small and only two terms. The equal sign comes down. And on the left side, there is no distributive property, but there is combining like terms. You could combine two X and three X. That'll be a total of five X's. What about the minus nine? Bring that down. And there's your new simplified blue equation. Two terms on the left side, two terms on the right side. I now want to get X by itself on one side of the equal sign. The problem is I have X's on both sides of the equal sign. So I need to get rid of one of them. I'm going to get rid of the uh, minus or the five X by subtracting it. That way, when I subtract it over here, six X take away five X is a simple X. Again, the equal sign keeps coming down. I'm going to rewrite everything that I have left. I have the minus nine on the left side. I have a minus nine on the right side. I need to get, whoops, uh, minus nine on the right side. I need to get the X by itself on the right side. So I'm going to get rid of that minus nine by adding nine. And what I do to one side, I do to the other side. I will have nothing on this side equaling X, which means that X equals zero. If you have X equals zero, you got it right. Get up and move. If you don't stay where you're at. On this question, we're going to again, simplify each side. And on the left side, we do have parentheses with a uh, negative sign out here. That's kind of like a negative one. So you could distribute the multiplication of negative one, or you could just think of distributing that negative sign, put that negative sign in front of the X and put that negative sign in front of the three. So you end up with a negative X minus three. And that's all you could do on the left side. So now let's look at the right side of the equal sign. And on the right side, there is no distributive property. There's no parentheses where you distribute the five, uh, but there is three terms. And out of those three terms, you could combine the numbers with the numbers, the five and the negative eight. And when I combine five and negative eight, that'll be a negative three. So let's begin with the X. You can't really combine the negative X with anything. So you just bring that down negative X. And when you do combine the five and the negative eight, that's a negative three. Okay, and let's bring down the equal sign that separates the left side from the right side. So what we have here is negative X minus three equals negative X minus three. At this point, you could conclude 
that they're identical. The left side's identical to the right side, which means that X could be anything you want. X could be all real numbers. Now, let's say you didn't see that right off the bat. You wanna still get X by itself on one side. So you wanna get rid of this minus X. You're gonna do the opposite, which is plus X, and that'll eliminate. Now, when you do to one side, you do to the other side, and that will eliminate as well, giving you a negative three equals negative three. And this is always true. So whenever this happens and you end up with something that's always true, you say x equals all real numbers, all real numbers. Um, or you could also say infinite solutions. Or you could say infinitely many solutions. Or on the quiz, I'll let you abbreviate IMS, infinitely many solutions. It's totally up to you, but that is your answer for this one. On this one, we want to simplify both the left side and the right side. So let's focus in on the left side first. Is there any distributed property? Absolutely. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. And then we're going to bring down whatever's left over. That 5, I'm going to put it right here. And the 5x, I'm going to bring it down right there as well. So I have distributed. Now I'm going to combine like terms. What does that mean? Combine the x's with the x's. So if you owe two x's and you have five x's, you're gonna have three x's left over. And then combine the numbers with the numbers. Five plus eight is 13. So there's my simplified left side. This is it. It used to be ugly, now it's just two terms. Let me simplify the right side now. And there is no distributive property, but I do have a minus minus and that could change to a plus plus, you're supposed to. And then after those, uh, after that change, you realize that you have three terms, one, two, three, and out of those three terms, you could combine the terms that are alike, x's with x's. So what I really have here is one of these x's combined with two more x's, that'll be a total of three x's. Um, let's not forget to bring down this equal sign which separates the left and the right. So once again, x plus two x is a total of three x's. So we have three x's, and that plus eight, plus plus eight, that simply comes down. And of course, it's now simplified, and you wanna get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. You don't want it on both sides, so get rid of one of them. I'm going to get rid of the three x by subtracting three x, and that eliminates, because three x take away three x is nothing. We do to one side, do to the other side, and wow, something weird happens, that eliminates as well. What do I have left? I have the 13, I have the equals, I have eight. 13 equals eight, that is a big no-no. 13 does not equal eight. So what do we say? We say no, as in no solution, okay? It's impossible to actually find an answer for X that will make this a true statement. It just doesn't work. So you say no solution. Okay, I hope this uh, video recording helps. Uh, good luck for the, on the quiz.